Hello, brethren. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you, wherever you may be. That the Holy Spirit may be working your heart in leading you closer to our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are here to continue this series in our prayer meeting here. The series called Seven Keys to a Happy Marriage. We have spoken about forgiveness, about self-sacrifice, and today we are going to talk about humility. And I pray that the Holy Spirit may find a place in each of our hearts and that uh, what we learn here today may be a blessing for our marriage, may be a blessing for our family, may be a blessing for our church, and uh, that we may all finish this prayer meeting here having the assurance that we met Jesus Christ here. Uh, today we will talk about humility. As I mentioned, we talked about forgiveness, self-sacrifice, and uh, next uh, time we are going to talk about uh, assertive communication. But today the topic is uh, humility. Humility is something that's misunderstood. Sometimes uh, people see humility as weakness and we are going to talk a little bit about it as well. See what the Word of God tells us. But what is in reality humility? Humility is acknowledging the fact that you may be wrong sometimes, that I may be wrong sometimes. It is to understand that we are not always right. Humility is to understand that others may be right in that we, even when we think they are wrong, they may, be, they may be right. And especially in marriage, in any relationship, but especially in marriage, we, it's very important uh, quality to be humble, to have humility. You know, humility is also accepting that we don't always have to be right. Because why we fight sometimes to be right? Many times we want to impress our spouse and we want to impress someone we are having a relationship with, we are dating, and uh, we feel the obligation of being right to impress the person that we love. But in reality, when we force too much, trying to impress our spouse, uh, showing that we are always right, it means we are trying to show that we are perfect and it only repels the person further away when we, the person that we really want to impress, we want to bring closer to us and by insisting of being right all the time, it just uh, drives the person away. So that's important to understand that humility is a blessing for who uh, have it, who has it. Uh, how can we show humility? We can show humility by trying to understand, showing that we care about our spouse's opinion, uh, our spouse's thoughts, feelings, hopes, and dreams. Sometimes we are so concerned about ourselves, about our needs, that we lose this grace of showing that we are interested in the opinion of our spouse, that we, deep inside, we... Uh, know that he or she may be right and we may be wrong. So not to fight, always to be right. It, that is humility. And what does the Bible tell us about humility? There are so many verses talking about being humble, about humility in the Bible. And uh, uh, one of the verses that uh, we all probably know it, but it's good to remind ourselves of it. It's Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. It says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. So by the contrary of what many people think, that humility will uh, make us appear to be weak, that we don't know what we are doing, that's the contrary. The Bible tells us here that humility goes before honor. So, uh, to be honored, we need to have humility. We'll talk about a little bit more about it, about uh, humility being misunderstood as weakness. But I want to also to say that uh, it's not uh, when we talk about humility, it doesn't mean that we have always to give in, or we have always to yield, or we have always uh, to give what others are asking from us. Uh, it doesn't mean that we cannot uh, uh, be sincere uh, or when, uh, that we cannot always say the truth. Yes, we can always say the truth. We can be always sin be sincere. What I mean being sincere? Uh, I'll give an example here. Some 
uh, your spouse from, uh, may cook you something, you know, make something that uh, she or he thinks you are really going to enjoy it, you are going to appreciate, you are going to love it. And then she may come or he may come and say, what do you, do you think about it? it? Do you really like it? You know, you don't have to lie. You, you should always be sincere, honest. But just, if you don't like it, just uh, be gentle when saying the truth. Try to put it in a nice way. Say, so, you know, uh, one example, instead of just saying, oh, I, I really don't like it, just say, you know, I like the one you made last week better than this one. The person will understand it. So uh, what I'm saying here is you don't have to always give, but be gracious when having to deny something. You should never lie, but be gentle when saying the truth. It's not necessary to be rude when being sincere. You can be sincere and at the same time be polite. Some people sometimes they confuse it. They say, you know, but I'm a person that always want to say the truth. I want to be sincere. Yes, but you still can be kind when being sincere. You don't need to be rude, uh, especially in marriage. Try to always pay attention what you are saying everywhere in any relationship. Uh, pay attention. The way you say it make a big difference. You don't have always to agree. You know, sometimes you... you you have to disagree. You need to disagree, but be humble when having to disagree with uh, your spouse. And uh, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, there are these two verses here. They give us a great lesson about humility. It says here, how can we be humble? And it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. Have you noticed that many of our discussions that we have, the arguments we have, the disagreements we have, most of them are not really important. After some time, we, we, when we consciously stop to think about it, we, many times we come to the conclusion say that was foolishness. If we just stop to think about what we are arguing about, many times we'll realize that it's not that important to the point of having a heated argument. So in marriage, always do what the Word of God is telling us to do here. Whatever you say, whatever you do, do it with humility, valuing your, valuing your spouse above yourself. That's what the Word of God says here. And God never errs when He tells us to do something, even if it seems not to be the best idea, it's always the best idea. Because God is always right. We are not always right, but God is always right. And He said here in Philippians 2, 3, rather in humility, value others about yourse above yourself. So, value the opinion of your spouse. Try to understand his side, her side, and that's showing humility. To show humility in marriage, we need to listen attentively, thoughtfully, show interest, trying to learn something and not judging and criticizing. Because sometimes when a spouse is talking, a spouse is uh, talking to the other, the other is always is already formulating some uh, judgments, some uh, words to combat what is being said. So instead of doing it, you know, when the other person is saying, even if it's something you don't like, if it, even if it's something uh, you think is wrong, try to learn something from it. Listen attentively, thoughtfully, showing interest in what the other person is saying, trying to understand what your spouse is trying to say. Because I want to tell you one thing, what we hear is not always what is being said. Especially if you have already some disagreement in the marriage, you are already a little bit upset with the other person, everything the other person will say will be, uh, you are going to be in the defensive mode. You are always going to be judging, uh, ready to criticize. You always think that the person is trying to hurt you, and most of the time that's not uh, the situation. So even when the opinion of your spouse is different from yours. Consider it thoughtfully. Show interest. Try to learn something. You know, show curiosity instead of criticism. Uh, 
uh, and, and if the person is saying something, if your spouse is saying something that uh, you don't really agree, just and you may think that he or she is completely wrong, just stop a little bit and think, is there at least 1% chance that I am the wrong person, that what he or she is saying is the right thing, and then uh, treat that person with compassion. Treat your uh, wife, your husband with compassion. And if he or she is really wrong, more yet, they need compassion. So show compassion. Most of the times in a conversation, if you show compassion, the other person will sooner or later come to see that you were right. But don't try to prove always at the moment, at the, at the heat of the moment, that you are right. Show some humbleness, some humility when discussing, when talking about some subject that the person is, is agreeing with you or giving a different opinion. Uh, and uh, there are moments in your marriage, in the marriage of everyone, that we are going to disagree. And uh, there are moments things may get a little bit hotter than it should. In these moments, one of the recipes given in the Bible for a successful marriage uh, is, once again, to be humble and to let it go and to be silent. Humility sometimes means for you not to say what you would like to say. Yeah, I used to say that the greatest right of a Christian is to open hands of its rights in some moments of in his or her life. So uh, if you see that things may get uh, hot or that, uh, an argument may raise or a yeah, discussion may raise, just be quiet, don't say anything. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 28 says, even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise, and he that shuts his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Sometimes we think to show wisdom, we have to explain our reasoning and we have to explain why we disagree. And many times, the best way of showing uh, wisdom, according to Proverbs 17, 28, is to be quiet. It's not to, be, uh, to say anything, it's to shut our lips and uh, leave it, let it go. That shows uh, wisdom. So for a marriage to be successful, we need to accept difference. We need to accept different opinions from our spouse. And uh, sometimes when couples come to uh, and meet with me for counseling, at least one of them comes sure that the other is wrong. Most of the time, both of them come thinking that the other is wrong. And most of the times, I tell you, uh, none of them are really wrong, uh, wrong in the other uh, conscious, consciously or intentionally, they love each other and they are just different of each other. And unfortunately, uh, when they are describing marriage, uh, what is happening is that they don't have enough knowledge to deal with the difference uh, they have between themselves. Uh, the husband is different from the, the, the wife, the wife is different from the husband, and it requires, it's necessary to have some knowledge to deal with these differences. And that's why we have this kind of series we are having here. That's why sometimes we have marriage seminars in the church. And uh, that's why we are talking about marriage here. So we can learn a little bit more about the difference, how to be humble, to accept these differences uh, that we have from each other, and then work them out and be happy, have a successful marriage. In Proverbs of chapter five, verse five says, Yea, all of you be subject to another and be clothed with humility. What does it mean to be subjected to one another here? Is to yield sometimes, is to be quiet many times, is to uh, understand, realize, accept the fact that we may be wrong in the moments that we think we are, uh, we are right, in those moments when we are sure we are right. How many times I have been sure about something just to later find out I was wrong about what I was thinking or about uh, my opinion was really wrong. So I think we all go through it. So that's humility, to understand that others may be right, I may be wrong. And I, I said we will talk a little bit more about confusing humility with weakness. Uh, contrary to what many people think, humility is no weakness. 
but uh, the opposite it uh, is strength only a strong person is able to control her or her spirit and be humble especially when you have the power in your hands to deal with the situation when you have authority and uh, and you control yourself you humbly accept the opinion of others you humbly yield to the possibility of the other person being right so that's uh, humility and that's strength according to the bible proverbs chapter 16 verse 32 says he that's slow to anger is better than the might and he that rules his spirit than he that takes a city so in other words the bible is saying here that uh, a person that is humble enough to control his anger to control his spirit, to rule his spirit, is stronger than a person that conquers a city. So that's what the Bible says, that is, humility is strength. So it's not at all a sign of weakness when you are humble. It's not easy to control our temper when provoked or treated disrespectfully. As I said, especially if you have some authority. You'll be tempted to show your authority, to put the person in place, and sometimes to treat the person with the same temper she treated you or he treated you, and uh, the person provoked you, you are going to show who is in power. And uh, in marriage, it's, it doesn't work usually most of the times anywhere, but especially in marriage, we are supposed to show grace and mercy and not try to impose by power our authority, our respect. But, uh, you know, uh, instead of uh, treating the person as the person deserves, if you treat this person with uh, kindness, with love, you are going to exert a power and inf an influence that can change your life, the life of this per the, your spouse and the life of others around you. Now, as I said, it's not easy to control our temper when provoked or treated disrespectfully. It's really hard, it's difficult. We want to pay back. We want to say uh, with the same tone that the person has uh, addressed us, but God can give us this strength that we need. As I said, being humble, to have humility, it is powerful, it requires strength, and only God can give us this strength. But there in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 23, the Lord's, uh, the prophet inspired, he said, God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. So yes, God is your strength. God is your power, and he can make your way perfect. So God can give you this true humility that you discern the moments when you have to yield, the moments when you have to give, and the moments when you have to deny but tonight with grace, with mercy, with kindness. So I wish that you may, by God's grace, let his Holy Spirit be always in your heart, that you may treat your spouse with love, with care, respecting his, her dreams, and uh, rejoicing in his, her success, and supporting when they, uh, your spouse fail, it needs your support, your encouragement, that you may always be this humble person that will treat each other with love and with care. And I wish that you never allow uh, your voice to lose the tender tones of affection, need your eyes to lose their brilliance, which made them shine during those days when you are dating but that you always may look to your spouse with the same eyes, that you may treat always your spouse with the same tone of voice that you treat, you address him or her during the time you are dating. So that may Jesus be a reality in your home. And so may you and your spouse enjoy heaven here in this earth and also in eternity. God bless. Amen. I want to pray with you all, but before praying, I want to thank you all once again for joining us here. Uh, Sister Mariana is here watching with us once again. Thank you very much. Uh, Joel Rosales is here with us. Sister Silvia Serrano, Nuto Fluter, uh, Efren Slintak, Padua. Thank you all for joining us here. Ahmed Sada is watching. Dina Burgos. And brethren, please join us also the next prayer meeting we will have here. Agil Duarte has been watching with us as well. 
uh, and we'll be talking next time here about assertive communication and uh, we still have a few more topics to go uh, brother richard sinat Tijan, thank you for being with us Mr. mika uh, joy thank you all for joining us here uh, samuel moises uh, newton ruben uh, may God bless your family's branding. May God bless each one of you that have been watching with us here. And may God bless those that will still be watching with us. I want to pray for you and for your marriage at this moment. So let's uh, uh, pray and talk to our Lord. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. Father, forgive our sins. Forgive those moments when we uh, did not act or speak with humility. Give us strength coming from thee to keep us always humble, that we may glorify your name in whatever we say, in whatever we do. I ask you, Lord, to bless each family represented here. Bless each marriage that uh, has been participating, that will be watching this video. Bless those that could not be watching, attending with us here. Visit them with thy mercy. Bring the miracle that some marriages need. May, intercede, may you intercede for our families. Protect us, protect our children, and bless our marriage. I ask, Lord, not because we deserve anything, but I ask all in the name of Jesus. Amen. So thank you again, Bradley, for joining us here. And I'll see you here by God's grace next time for to continue our seminar with the top that we'll be talking, assertive communication. God bless you, your marriage, and your family.